Hi, it's Albert Kaufman, and today we are having a free online marketing clinic featuring myself and Annalise Kelly as the presenters. And we're happy to have a group of people with us who also, I'm sure, will be sharing lots of ideas and tricks and tricks and tips about marketing. So I've been at this for about 12 years, teaching small businesses how to do online marketing using tools of the trade like email marketing and social media. And today we're going to basically have a smorgasbord of ideas and presentations about a number of different areas. And my intention is to do this potentially on a weekly basis. So if you enjoy what you are experiencing today or what you're seeing tomorrow, um, feel free to check back in at my website, albertideation.com or email me and I'll get you included on a list so that you can find out when these are happening in the future. There's something special to be said for online events and for actually being at them together with other people. There's a there's an excitement I think that's a lot different than watching something in a replay. And if you're watching this on a replay, I hope it's fun. So there you go. Um, Annalise, would you like to introduce yourself? Hold on a second, you are the muted. You? Go ahead. Okay. My name is Annalisa Kelly. I have uh, known Albert since 2001 and, um, and been a beneficiary of his marketing advice many a time over the years in different businesses I've run. Uh, for quite a number of years, I've been a writer and a lot of my writing has been content marketing for uh, some, some entities that seem a little bit like they're not marketing, like uh, airline magazines, Travel Oregon, uh, Travel Salem, things like that. But also I've done a lot of content writing for a huge range of businesses. And a lot of that has been travel. As Ellen knows, travel is in the um, doldrums right now. So I'm uh, kind of on a pivot and trying to bring in more uh, marketing clients, focusing on SEO and review management, as well as providing content. Fantastic. Thank you, Annalisa. Um, as you may have seen, um, Kim has shared her information about herself in the chat area. And if you'd like to join her, you're welcome to. Um, if you'd like to post questions that way, that would be fantastic as well. Um, and if you just feel like there's nothing else you can do but unmute yourself and ask the question while one of us is talking, that's fine too. Um, I really intend this to be a free-flowing um, experience and um, I love improvising and I love following your questions and your minds to um, try to help answer your actual questions about um, marketing. So with that said, if anyone does have questions, go ahead and put them in the chat area. And for now, I'm going to start by just demoing a couple of things that I thought of um, before the class started and some things that have come up today um, and in just in recent times. One of them is events. All of you are here because we're having an event, we're having a meeting. Um, and I wanted to talk about the event as a way of doing a lot of different things. So the event can be an actual physical event, but you can also use events as ways to have people take action on things. So for instance, I've used events on Facebook in the past to make, um, to ask people to take an action. It's a great way to be able to invite a lot of people to something and then to get them to invite their friends to something. So a Facebook event, for instance, is like almost like a potentially an exponentially growing entity that can be leading to an actual virtual meeting these days or a physical meeting in general. But it can also be a way to have people take action, sign a petition, donate to a candidate, that type of thing. Um, it can also be a way to just ask people to take an action, like to join your email list. You can make an event that is just around that topic. So um, I'm mostly going to talk about sort of ways to do things, um, routes to get to places. I'm not so much going to talk about what you're actually um, advertising or marketing. So I hope that that still uh, ends up being useful. So we've got a lot of people here. This is great. Um, Let's see, Robin's asking. Yeah, okay, great. All right, so first off, I wanted to talk about Facebook groups. So one of the ways, <laughs> all right, I'm gonna actually share my screen and go into, into Facebook. And one of the fun things about doing this type of activity is 
um, and some of you from having done similar kinds of activities know that when you start demoing on uh, a platform like Facebook or uh, really any live platform like Nextdoor or something like that, anything could happen. So just bear with me. But I wanted to show you uh, an example. Here's, um, actually, I'm going to switch over to this one. Here's a group that I started a while back. It's called Quiet Clean PDX. Um, and of course, we didn't go directly to that. That's all right. So groups, so there's a difference between Facebook pages and Facebook groups. Facebook pages are basically like a yellow pages ad. So think of it that way. It's a place where if someone searches on Facebook, they can go and they can find out your hours and your website and your contact information, et cetera. Whereas a group is a place where you can get a lot more engagement. So this is a group that I started a while ago that has to do with basically eliminating gas powered leaf blowers. Um, you'll see on this group, you know, I've got a cover photo up here. Um, and then there's all sorts of other stuff that, that's over here on the left-hand side. There's a spot here where a person can sign up for an email list. So I'm going to click on that and show you what that looks like. And, and as you may know, a lot of what I do here are in marketing terms is, has to do with building an email list so you can get the word out. In fact, most of the people who are on this call today came to this event via being on an email list. So here's an email list sign up form that comes from here. Um, and then within this, if a person came to this, uh, to this group, they would have to go through a series of issues where um, basically they're, you know, answering a question to verify that they're human and that they're interested in the topic. And then also I encourage them to, um, let's see if I can show that to you. Uh, I'm not seeing it quickly, but basically it, if you set up a group, you're allowed to ask, um, you're allowed to ask people questions. So here are the questions I have for this. What's your favorite reason? And take a moment to join our email list. And that's it. And then once a person does that, then I can see what their answer is. And sometimes people will just put their email address in here as the answer, and then I'll add them to the email list from there. Um, in terms of what happens in a group, um, groups are can be all over the map. This one's somewhat quiet. It's mostly me posting. But here you can see there's a little bit of engagement. Another great thing about groups is that you can search a group and you can find a topic. So for instance, I'm going to show you something fun that I discovered yesterday and about groups. So here is a group uh, that I'm a part of in Portland called Portland World Domination Summit. Let's say I wanted to find out about a topic like marketing. Why not? And if I go ahead and click search, I go into this group's history. I can see a few things that I posted. But look at this, if a group is old, I can go back to the beginning of time and see what people were posting. Now, obviously not everybody has <laughs> the endless amount of time to go and do this type of thing, but what's useful to know about groups and this particular um, aspect is that you could search on anything and you can find within a group um, topics that may interest you. So. Groups are also a great place to announce, um, you know, things that you're doing. So for instance, here's me announcing that I'm doing today's marketing clinic. And a couple of you may be here because of that. So I could probably do, I think actually next week, I'm going to do um, a thing that's just all about Facebook because I wanted to, I'd like to show a little bit more off about that. Um, let's see what else. Next door, I want to talk for a minute about next door. And let's see how I'm going to get in there. All right. And let me know if anything has already come up in terms of questions, Annalise. Um, actually, Albert, I don't see the chat right now. Is it available? Oh, OK. I guess I do see it now. Thank you. Sure. Yep. Um, 
Yeah, and if anybody has a question about Facebook groups that I just sort of ran through that whole bit of a presentation, but if something occurs to you, um, let me know. Right now, my sense is that Facebook groups are pretty much the main group type in the world um, that are very accessible and very easy for like a small business to set up. And so, um, yeah, that's just something I'll say. These are some other groups that I'm a part of. Oh, I guess another point on that topic that I want to say is that Facebook groups, um, oh gosh, where did my mind just go? Let's see. Oh, so let's say you're using Facebook, right? Um, people generally, I'm using something called Facebook Purity. This is a this is a uh, plugin basically that allows you to customize Facebook. I highly recommend learning about it. You can basically go here to Fluff Busting Facebook Purity, and you can install it. Here are some of the settings that you can change, um, and you can basically get rid of sponsored posts. So you don't ever have to see advertising anymore on Facebook. So that's something to know about. Um, but I wanted to just say, like, a lot of people are scrolling through Facebook and they're looking at their news feed. Here's my news feed. Because of Facebook purity, you may notice this is the most recent post that's been posted three minutes ago, four minutes ago, six minutes ago. So I'm able to set my timeline to look at most recent posts, which is interesting. But also, um, I tend not to spend any time here at all. I mostly am spending time in Facebook groups because that's where engagement is happening. That's where people are talking to each other. Um, here's an example of one of the Facebook groups that I moderate. And here's somebody and they've answered the questions that I've asked. Bum, 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 bum. And now of course I'll just approve them. So anyway, that's a little bit more about Facebook groups. It's a place where engagement is happening. It's a place where networking is happening. It's a place to meet people. Um, as opposed to your main newsfeed, which often ends up just being a real cacophony of different kinds of viewpoints and arguments and discussions that often go nowhere and are very difficult also to sort of keep, um, keep alive. That said, one more little piece about Facebook. If you want to keep track of a conversation, let's say um, Matthew's recent um, time in a pool was something that was interesting to you. And I think Matthew will really appreciate if he ever ends up realizing that I'm using him in a demonstration because he is a presenter himself. So basically, off of this little three dot thing on the top right of the post, you'll get a pull down menu where you can click on save post. So there, from there, I can go and I can add it to a collection. And I'm going to add it to that particular collection. Now, if I go into that collection, then I can go back and see what what is in that collection and, and which posts I have. This is useful if you ever start a conversation that actually has quite a lot of um, communication on it. So I'll show that to you from a different angle. And then I will get off of Facebook because that's not the only tool that I wanted to show today. So here on my left side of my screen, I can see all of these different things. And if I scroll down, once my screen unfreezes, I can click on saved. And for instance, I've done some posts that um, that I'm interested in coming back to. So for instance, here's one. I, I wrote a post the other day asking if people thought it would be a great idea to have Portland software, pre <laughs> software pretzels, soft pretzel company. And I just thought it would just be a, such a fun um, idea. And people agreed. A lot of people think that that would be a good business to start. And so at some point, I'm probably going to come back to this. I did come back to it and show off that I did actually order some soft pretzels and they were delicious. And so that may be a conversation that I want to come back to. All right, I'm going to move on to Nextdoor for a few minutes. Nextdoor, if you don't know already, it's nextdoor.com. And it is a fantastic, well-organized 
way to see what's going on locally. So let's say you want to find a real estate agent, which is not impossible to do, but I happen to find, I know a couple. So if I was a real estate agent, I would probably either be on here or hire somebody who would be on here frequently. So here's an example, real estate agent, especially in rentals in Southeast. Um, I'm sure of diving into next door, but I'm assuming that some of you know, or hopefully all of you know, at least the basics of how next door works. But here we go. This is somebody is asking a, for a recommendation. All these people responded, my friend Bob. And so down here, if I was a real estate agent, I would put my information in there. And then I would probably also tag my business. You can see here, people have the opportunity to tag a business. Living Room Realty is, is the one that's mentioned here. So um, now there's all sorts of different kinds of strategies of things that you can do here. But um, let's say you were looking for a fence builder, same thing. So this is great for looking for, but it's also great for advertising your own services out into the world. And what I love about Nextdoor particularly is how all that it's local. It's local um, resources. It's way it's a way to connect with people who live nearby each other. Right now, as I've been saying a lot to people who have been hearing me talk about this, um, there is a way that everybody that's walking around you right now is probably a neighbor. There's no Airbnb happening per se. Right at this moment, everybody that's walking the neighborhood or biking the neighborhood is potentially somebody who you may find interesting and, you know, you, it's a neighbor, which is unusual in our lives to have that um, moment. So anyway, here is the map of where I am. I'm in Richmond. Um, this is a help map. These are people who have said that they are interested in offering help right now at this time. Um, but that's not exactly what I just wanted to show you. But that is the map of Richmond, which is the neighborhood that I'm sitting in. But when I post on Nextdoor, I'm actually going to be able to reach out to a much further um, level of people. So here is 33,000 people live in my neighborhoods of Richmond plus nearby. And I'll just show you a quick, this is a map of um, that area. So as you can see, this is the map of Richmond and surroundings. And these are the different neighborhoods that are around me. Now, if I was missing my cat, I probably would just write to my neighborhood. But if I wanted to advertise the fact that I have a particular service um, or food or whatever it is, I would probably up that to some other nearby neighborhoods and potentially all of them. But you have to use this sparingly, otherwise um, everybody and their mother hears from you about you know, the fact that you wanna give away a magazine or something like that. So that's a little bit about Nextdoor. Um, another way to do similar things to Nextdoor is the things like the Buying Nothing project. Um, this is our group for Buying Nothing and that's a great way of sharing resources with one another. And there's other groups like that that are like um, being neighborly uh, like that. So, okay. yeah. Um, I'll jump in. There's a couple questions on the chat that sure. lingered for a minute about Facebook. So Kim asks, is there any limit on the number of groups you can host? I bet the answer is no. What do you, what do you say? I bet you would never run into that limit. Great. And then a previous mess, uh, question from Jenka was, is there a way to share individual posts like that to the Facebook page for an organization? And now time has passed, so um, I'm not sure exactly what uh, what this question means. Is there a way to share individual posts? Oh, okay. Well, one thought is in terms of sharing group posts, groups often are private. And so, for instance, if I look at... Um, this group, you can see that I can't, there's no share button here to share it beyond. 
But if I look at this group, which has a different set of settings, you can see that I've set it up so that I can share this basically anywhere on Facebook. So there's the share button. Um, in terms of, I'm assuming she's the person is talking about next uh, about Facebook. Yeah, that was a Facebook question, and I I'm trying to unmute Jenka unsuccessfully to verify. Hey, oh, Jenka, I, I'm here. Yeah, oh, there we I, go. Uh, I, it was about the the Facebook page because I have trouble sharing like when a individual post when I want to actually share it to the page. Um, it won't let me. Yeah, there is some challenge with that. I have seen that before. Thank you. Jenka, do you mind muting again? There's TV in the background. Thank you. All right. So those are a couple of areas. Does anybody have any questions about Nextdoor? All right, cool. Well, does anybody have any questions about anything? Robin says she can't hear me. Well, I am hopefully, can people hear me in general? Just give me a thumbs up if so. Okay, great. Albert, I have a question about posting online events on Nextdoor. Sure. What do you, do you think, if it's like a registration link, whether that is good or does it, or should I not post registration links on um, well, Nextdoor? Well, it's interesting you should ask. I just posted earlier today on Nextdoor, and I think posting your registration link is a perfect thing to post. Um, if, especially for a virtual event. So um, for instance, I'll just show you how I did it. Um, posting events on Nextdoor, I don't think necessarily leads to all that much because people will see it once. There's not a real way to get, um, to get like buy-in and to, you know, like for instance, one person says they're going on here, but it's nothing like, actually it's me. <laughs> um, I wanted to share this with you, by the way. My brother sent this to me earlier today. I thought that was kind of cute. But um, so, but what it does is it does get out into the ether. It does get into people's digest of Nextdoor. And, you know, it is one more way. It will show up on the news feed of Nextdoor if anyone is watching that. Um, but I don't think it's a real... I think what I do, the reason I put the event on Nextdoor is more as just sort of a marker so that to, as an, and as a reminder to people about the kind of work that I do in the world. And like with all marketing, everything is about repetition. So if I'm, you know, now for four years or five years in my neighborhood, I've been mentioning, oh, Albert does marketing, Albert teaches marketing. And, you know, has that ever led to one thing um, from people in my neighborhood? I don't really know, but um, I feel like it's a good practice to do. And part of marketing also is just trying out different places of putting things. So I try Nextdoor. And I think of Nextdoor as really more useful in terms of, um, well, trying to guide my neighborhood towards certain changes that I'd like to see um, I watched a presentation today by Mark Lakeman of the City Repair Project, and um, boy, is he year, light years ahead of me in thinking about how to basically turn every uh, neighborhood into a village, but it gave me some great ideas. And those are some of the things that I've been trying to encourage in my neighborhood and hopefully to, to good effect. Albert? Yeah. Um, so a thought on next door and businesses. Um, on the left-hand column under neighborhood, second thing down is businesses. And I'm pretty sure if you go there, you'll get to choose like, oh, I want to look at the car mechanics and I want to look at the housekeepers or whatever. Absolutely. So there's that. There's, there's being able to search for um, things. And then there's also being able to add yourself. So that is something I would recommend, especially if your business is one that could benefit by having more local traffic. So you can come in here and you can claim your business. And then um, you can, uh, right now I'm not gonna add mine because I'm already in there, but actually if I go in, you can see what a claimed business looks like. Um, I'll just quickly see if I can find mine. It's not a perfect system. I still feel like um, Nextdoor is trying to figure out what, what it wants to be in terms of, um, business but let me just see if i can 
pull this up. And while Albert's doing that, I'll jump in and mention that there is an opportunity to recommend people, uh, recommend businesses there. Right. And when you when you see the the listing, there'll be a heart and an, you know a number next to it. So 30 people have have clicked the heart. So you don't get a one through five rating like on many sites. It's just like yes, I recommend. Right. Um, then also, I'll mention that in the chat, a question came up from Kim: Does claiming a business only work with brick and mortar? And Albert is not brick and mortar, so he's a good. What yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So here's what my business looks like on here. And if someone tags me and says something about me, um, they can then also come in here and contact me via, in fact, actually, I'm curious where that actually lands. Okay, so I want to make sure that we give uh, you a chance, Annalise, to discuss some of your areas of expertise. Um, if there are no questions about the two areas that I kind of went down, um, why don't we switch over to you and how does that sound? That sounds great. Okay. So hi everybody. Um, yeah, the things that I'm interested in talking today about are SEO, search engine optimization, and review management. And they actually kind of tie into each other. Um, and some of, you know, there's about six of you who are, I can actually see. Um, why don't you raise your hands if you'd prefer to hear about SEO? And uh, then I'll give you a chance to raise your hands if you'd rather hear about review management. So SEO first. Um, and of course, I need to change this. Let's see. Uh, I'm sorry, one more time. Raise your hands if your SEO is your preference. Great. I don't, and then raise your hand if review management is your preference. Okay, we'll talk about SEO for a second. Um, all right. So let's see. Um, so, one thing that I'm not sure of is how much folks know here about SEO. So I'm going to start at a pretty basic level. Um, and I hope that, oh, and then there was a question that came up. Uh, what is review management? Well, that is doing what you can to make sure that your reviews on Yelp, on Facebook, on Google, et cetera, are as good as possible because people really do pay attention to that. So, um, so that's what review management is, is, um, you know, either by yourself or with professional help from someone like me doing everything you can to boost your review situation. Um, so as far as SEO goes, SEO means search engine optimization. And what that really means is a collection of tactics to help search engines find your website. Um, and the stronger your SEO game is, the higher you'll rank on the search engine results page. Meaning when you go into Google and type, you know, Portland Realtor or uh, Portland Massage Therapist, whatever it is, you know, see, see who comes up um, on that first page. And I just, uh, heard kind of a joke today, the best place to hide a dead body is on page two of Google results. So people seldom go past page one. So that is really your goal is to get there. Um, and so, so those tactics can, um, they, they can range a lot from highly technical to less technical, but the ultimate goal is that you wanna bring traffic to your site and keep them there. And the way you keep them there is with content that they're interested in. Um, so how are they gonna get to your site? Well, there's basically two ways. It might be organic search, and that means they went into a, uh, you know, into a, a Google box and typed in what they're looking for. And the other way is a link from a resource, and that by, might be your own email newsletter. It might be your social media or someone else's social media. It might be an article, um, a publication, some other person's website, some other entity's website. So, um, you know, really, their goal is to just um, get traffic to the site and and keep the people there. Um, and so the question is, you know, a question is, can you do it yourself or should you get an expert? And that would depend a lot on your goals. Um, and it also, it's like anything business related. Um, you know, what, what are your own inclinations? Some of us want to do our own accounting, our own graphics, build our own website. I'm kind of like that. Um, and other people want to uh, hire out some of those functions. So there's definitely a lot that you can do on your own. And at a certain level, then it starts getting maybe a little bit more wonky and then perhaps having an expert take care of it. Um, another element of SEO is that some, some elements are kind of static. They don't change rapidly, but other elements do change. Um, like Google does change its algorithms. And so, um, so for that reason, it's a mistake to look at SEO as something that you do once and you, you, you know, set it and forget it. And done. Mostly SEO takes some maintenance. Um, and so, um, so one thing that benefits SEO when there's 
frequent activity on a site. So for example, if you wanted to load a gallery of 40 pictures onto your wedding photography site, loading them all in one day is not as advantageous to you as far as Google's concerned compared to loading them you know, to a day over the course of a month or something like that, because that suggests activity and Google likes to see that. It does not like to see um, static websites. Um, likewise, if you, um, you know, if you have a blog, each time you post a, a blog post, that's beneficial. So, um, so, you know, on, on some level, even if nobody ever saw it, it would have a little bit of an advantage. I don't think that's a good enough reason to do a blog, but, but it, there, that is true. Um, that just the, just the change, just the change in, in activity is beneficial. Um, and the, uh, the thing about Google's al algorithms is they do change because, uh, you know, ultimately folks are trying to sort of game the system and then Google gets smart and fixes whatever, uh, you know, whatever tricks people are trying to employ and, and overcomes them. So then people come up with new tricks. Um, a big element of SEO keywords. And, um, and a, another thing that is true is your keywords might change over time. And that is another reason why SEO is probably not a one and done kind of activity. Um, your keyword strategy might be different at the at the launch of your business compared to when you're, you know, more in your sophomore efforts or further along. So, um, so that's kind of a quick introduction. Um, I think it's really important to know when you want to work in your SEO. Um, if you know, there's the distinction between organic search and uh, people finding your website in other ways is important. SEO is really about improving organic search. Organic search is when someone just out of nowhere goes on onto their phone or onto their laptop and seeks something. So SEO is, um, is crafted to, to try and, and maximize that. Um, if, if you're a business for whom that really isn't how your customers ever find you and you don't really envision them finding you that way, then perhaps it's not a really important goal for you. And that's gonna vary a lot based on industries. Um, but that's something that I think, you know, you should, you should certainly reflect on before you decide that um, boosting your SEO is a is an important goal. It really does just kind of depend on on the nature of your business. Um, something that is really key to um, doing well in SEO is make sure you have a Google My Business um, listing. And that is when I'm going to go ahead and whoops do the sh screen share. Um, Should be on the bottom of your. Oh, yeah, I, you I just found something. Let's see. And so um, I'm going to just show you the, the Google My Business is. Um, So Google My Business is, um, is a business listing that you are in charge of building. Um, and, uh, and it enables people to write, write reviews about you. And if you don't have a Google My Business listing, then you don't show up on the Google Maps. Um, and you don't get a chance for people to, to do a review for you. So, and it also impacts your SEO because Google is the, absolutely the big, you know, the, the big uh, gorilla. Oh, darn. Um, this is what I wanted. Hey, hey, Albert? Yeah. You know, you might mute yourself. Your keystrokes are super loud. Thanks. Um, okay, so the, the Google, My, sorry, I should have had this box for this. Google My Business would be right up here and you'll see it in the box. And um, let's see, I think if I do this, ah, um, yeah, so it's, it's absolutely a highly recommended thing to get your Google My Business um, listing done. It's not a lot, it's free. And um, it is this kind of listing here. So it provides a direct link to your website. It offers directions. Um, it offers, these are all Google reviews. So, you know, many ways to review a business. Google is a really important one, um, partly because they're so important in the, um, in the SEO game. 
Um, and then there's also chances to include your reviews, um, some information that you're telling the public about your business, um, links to your social media. So I'd say if you have if you haven't built one, it's a good thing to build. Um, doesn't take a really long. Time. One one piece of advice I have is you may encounter some um, spots in their form where it says you know tell us this about your history or or your mission or whatever, and you, you might say oh well that's all on my website. People can see it when they get to my website. Well, many people aren't going to click through and get to your website. So really take advantage of all those opportunities there. The more information there, the, the more there is for Google to work with and for the public to work with. So I'd really encourage you to make sure you, you know, load picture, logo, uh, put as much stuff as you can there to identify you and that's beneficial. Um, I could talk a lot more about it, but I'm gonna just stop there and, uh, and invite questions. Um, I'm going to stop the screen share. There we go. Thanks, Annalise. Um, Robin had a question where she was asking about whether or not SEO involves changes in your website structure or only how you create visibility. Um, it, it, it totally depends on how your website was built to start with. Um, and so in some cases, people may have had a website um, built a long time ago. They may have had someone in you know, 2011 say, hey, I'm going to optimize you for SEO. And all those things that they may have done may have been a good idea then, but are no longer a good idea. So, so the answer is both. It is both um, structural things. It can relate to um, the actual like, meta descriptions and the tags and stuff that are within, your, within the code of your website. And then it also relates a lot to, to content. So it's a kind of a two-pronged approach. Um, and I'm looking at the questions now. Um, and yeah, so Robin's question, how to do SEO oneself? Um, I think I, I've already sort of asked her okay. um, perhaps to approach you about that, but I think some of what, um, that's partly what you're showing right now is how to um, do SEO yourself. Like if you scroll down to the last two questions, I think those are, there's some interesting, uh, things shared there as well. Um, so Kim has talked about um, if my business and services are online, uh, online, as long as I have a website, I can Google my business. I think you can even have Google my business without having a website. So yeah. I think and, that's probably true. And yeah, I, I um, built my own Google my business. It's not quite live yet. But uh, I think I, I needed to put an address because they mailed me a confirmation card, but the address is not public. So um, so on some level, you do need to have an address for their tracking, but it doesn't need to be an address that the public deals with. Yeah, and um, then Sherry mentioned that uh -huh. you can actually hide that once yeah. you have established it. And then Robin's asking, do I need someone to direct my website to tell me? Um, you know, that's a, you're getting into some, I think more complex areas. It's like, it's sort of like answering, um, you know, it's not one size fits all. I think depending on who you are, your you may need more or less help and you can also throw as much money at this as you want to so you could spend ten thousand dollars on seo or you could spend no money and you know your mileage will vary depending on um, how much sort of money and attention and time you throw at it but there are simple things you can do like for myself i'm using something in wordpress called yoast which is a plugin um, i could give a quick demo of that maybe too but Basically, it's a plugin with WordPress where every time I do a new post, it allows me to customize the keyword that I'll be searching on or someone might be searching on to find that post as well as um, tags, as well as sort of the text that you would see. So for instance, when you come to, um, let me just do a quick showing of this. When you come to a page um, a web page. All right. Let's see here. So here's my website. And if somebody comes to this page, let's say, build my list, there will be um, so actually right now I can't edit this, but 
you can see sort of down at the bottom, this is under the uh, category email marketing and it's tagged with these particular tags. So that's something that I use Yoast um, for to create that. And then, then you know, some other sort of simple um, SEO things in terms of websites are let you want to have in the title of your URL in the H1 tag of your website, which is the top heading. Also in the text, you want to have everything tagged with, I, I, ideally I would have email marketing in all of those places. Here, here, in the text, um, and then possibly other places as well. So those are some other SEO type things you can do. It's basically around keywords, and that's something that we could talk for hours about, but keywords like subject lines end up being really important around search. You want to talk at all about review management, um, Annalise? A couple things that came to sure. mind about about SEO. Um, you know, one one way to kind of rephrase Robin's question is, what can I do for myself about SEO, and what can't I? And you know, the answer to that will depend on does this you know is this a person who's like into coding and right building websites or not? But um, but basically, there's a lot of things that you can do that are not technical, and then there's some things that are more technical. But for example, something that doesn't even relate to your own website at all is the more if you have reviews on you know yahoo and facebook if you have a presence on these various directories um there's you know there's many um you know there's general things like city search and yahoo and then there's also industry specific things like realtor.com or webmd and while it is not recommended to necessarily try and get your get a listing on every single darn one of those um your presence there is part of your authority as far as google is aware so um so I recommend you know start by googling yourself and see where you are and you might go hey I didn't even know that I was on city search or Yahoo or whatever so go and look at that it may be that you need to claim that listing for example um, with Yelp some people you know there's there's you know listings there and reviews on them and the owner has not claimed that listing so take you know take authority over it um, claim your listing build some listings on um, on you know the most popular and useful industry specific things if if you're a healer, there's going to be certain things. If you're a builder, it's going to be Angie's list, so on. But uh, but Google does does see that and does uh, use that as part of how it establishes you as a credible business. So um, it is worthwhile to to make sure that those are functioning. Um, um, I know we have some people on here who have some SEO experience. Um, would anybody like to speak up, Simon? I'm sure you have some thoughts at this point. Um, but anyone else like to pitch in? Um, I would. Great, John, go ahead. Well, um, what I have found, because what I do is not typical. So if you're a real estate agent, there are a million real estate agents. So what you have to do is really stand out. But what I do is so different that I seem to be always at the top of the ratings and stuff. But the, the question that I wanted to ask Annalisa about this was, um, if you're Googling yourself on your own computer, you're gonna get different results than people Googling you on their computer. So you, you really, I think, need to be aware of um, fooling yourself about how important you are. <laughs> well, that is a terrific point, John, absolutely. And by the way, nice to hear your voice, how you doing? Um, yeah, and so there's such a thing as an incognito window, and that's a window, and if anyone's more techie than me, correct me if I've got any of this wrong, but basically I can go up in my upper right-hand corner of my um, Firefox, I think, and pull down the menu and choose to open an in incognito menu, and then um, that is, or window, excuse me, an incognito window, and that doesn't, um, doesn't know about any of my search history, and it doesn't keep a search history. So uh, if I type in my own business there, I will see what basically any Joe off the street would see. Now, of course, any Joe off the street, their own search history will probably have an impact on what they see too. Um, and I'm gonna parenthetically go into another point, and that is um, a lot of people when they're Googling, they'll say Mexican food near me, massage therapist near me. And that local aspect, um, I think is really critical to have a Google My Business listing 
um, if you want to show up in those things because the near me business um, it relies on on the mapping function of Google and the Google my business is how you get on their map Annalise, um, do you want to talk at all about, let's say I was coming to you for SEO help, um, what would the process be and, you know, what kinds of thing, like, what are, what are you wanting to do with people who might need that kind of service? Well, um, that is a great question. And um, I feel like the starting point would be really trying to understand what your goals are. And also, uh, I would want anyone who came to me to have an understanding of how their clients usually find them, how, how people usually find them. Because I think SEO is not necessary for everyone. And it could be that someone like John, now John runs Wild Food Adventures, uh, you know, foraging education service, basically. Um, how many are there in Portland? You know, it could be, it could be SEO is not super important to him because by the time people are saying, um, foraging classes, Portland, Oregon, I'm not sure how many there are to choose from. Um, another question is, uh, you know, like for me personally, if I need a massage therapist, I would not Google best massage therapist in town. I know so many of them, but I don't know many people who are say financial advisors. So, um, so anyway, so I think kind of knowing, knowing where your customers come from and what your goals are. Um, I think that honing SEO is, is really useful in the most competitive industries like, um, you know, where there's a lot of traffic in them. Like people get new roofs every day. They get auto body work every day. Um, they get new furnaces every day. So I think some of those may be the best venues for working on SEO. And then um, you know, if, if I had a client coming to me, I, um, I, I kind of work a little bit more on the, um, a little less technical end. You know, there's, there's definitely companies who are much more code oriented. Um, but the, the good news is there's a lot of tools, there's analytics, there's Google Analytics and other tools that help, um, help evaluate um, your SEO. Um, so basically, the way we'd start is have a conversation like that. And, um, and then really, I think I would try to assess, is this, uh, is this a project that needs mostly a one-time effort or is this more of an ongoing effort that's, you know, you don't, you don't necessarily make changes and suddenly your SEO rises the next day. It's, you know, it's a, an iterative process, um, especially with keywords. If it's a very competitive industry, um, you know, people put huge budgets and huge efforts into running, you know, A and B tests on different keywords and so on. Um, and that's kind of at a, at a level that's beyond, I think, most of our businesses that we're talking here today. So, um, so that's my slightly vague answer, but it's what I got. Great. Um, I, I also want to respond to... Um, Jenka had a question. When I look up our organization on Google My Business, there are two listings. Should I just discard the extra one? Are there any drawbacks to doing that? And I think the answer to that is it, is it probably benefits from a little research. Um, you know, click through on each one and which one is better. Um, ultimately, you're best served by having only one. I'm sure that's true. And I think that's also true on Facebook and on other places. If you've got duplicates, that's not helping you. Um, so sometimes that happens if people change addresses or change business names or change ownership. And that starts to get into a slightly more complicated um, realm. But I think it is worth, worth the effort of, of uh, you know, sorting that out and having, having one clear identity on a given platform, not two. I think um, something that, you, that came to mind as you were speaking is that like for any of these kind of efforts that we've been talking about today, it's really about making effort. It's really about trying things and then trying new things and then trying new things. Kim can probably speak to this because anybody that's, or John, um, anybody that's been in business for 10 years, 20 years, um, you know that part of the work and, and part of the benefit is having people who stick with you for a long time and having people constantly sort of coming in your door. And you only get that by trying things. You, make, you, you actually get that a lot by making mistakes too. And I think a lot of people are hoping that they get everything in line, everything perfectly. You'll see this with websites all the time. You can tell someone's put a ton of effort into a website and it's gorgeous. But websites constantly evolve. They have to evolve. The technology changes, the SEO changes, um, our world changes. I mean, look at the huge change that we're in the middle of right now. No one could have predicted this. And the effort that it takes to like keep surfing the waves of change 
it's just it's effort it's work and it's and it's attention to what you're doing but don't be afraid to try things don't be afraid to make an event don't be afraid to speak up in an event like this don't be afraid to try something on next door half the time on next door i'm trying things out and i get feedback that i'm doing it wrong you know but um it's just a matter of like constantly trying things changing getting better getting smarter and then after time, hopefully your business has benefited from all the effort that you've done and then there's more effort to do. <laughs> I don't think you ever really end. Even Mark Zuckerberg, I was watching a Facebook live thing with Mark Zuckerberg yesterday talking about the Facebook work tools. You know, and the guy's a billionaire. I mean, basically he could have sold everything a long time ago and walked away and be sitting on a yacht drinking mimosas. But no, he's working harder than I am, you know? Um, and obviously he likes doing that. So, uh, you know, that's part of it too, is you really want to be doing something that you enjoy doing. So that's part of why I've invited Annalise to come join me today is that she's starting new down a new path and it's not completely new. It dovetails into what she's been doing in the past, but um, you know, um, she's pivoting. So um, Kim says, my bed and breakfast is closed, da, 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 but the Google listing does not go away. It says, yeah, okay, well, that's, you know, that's the change in the current market. Yeah. Um, Anybody else have questions? Go ahead, Annalise. Well, I'll, yeah. I'll, so one thing to keep in mind, like right now in COVID land, Google is actually swamped because they've been doing so much, um, you know, we've changed our hours. We're now doing take up out only and, all, you know, many, many changes. So they, uh, there's a lot of comments about how Google My Business listings aren't going live as quickly as they should. And also reviews themselves aren't going live. They get, they get sucked into a, a dormant spot while they're being reviewed. So, um, so you know, and partly in response to Kim's question about a Google listing that says permanently closed. Um, yeah, you know, I don't think that's a big problem to have that hovering around. And then a time could come when the the new person with that new address is starting to launch their whatever business, and they're like, ah, I don't wish I wish this listing wasn't here. Um, but anyway, my kind of initial point is that uh, Google is really um you know they're maxed out right now so so now would probably not be a good time to like la 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 i think i'll see if i can get that that listing deleted give it give it six months or a year and then maybe pursue it mm, good point um any more questions from anyone john go ahead well, it's it's more of a comment about uh, google my listings or google my business what is that can't remember i have it mm -hmm. <laughs> whatever it's called and um i view that and, and tell me if I'm thinking about this wrong, is to peak interest to get them to come to my website. So I don't put gobs of information in each of those categories. I put titillating information in each of those categories so that people will go, oh, I better check this out. It's either so weird I want to check it out or it's so interesting I want to check it out. So just to I, Yeah, I, I approve. I think the mistake is leaving them blank or mostly blank or close to blank, just thinking like, oh, they can find that out elsewhere um, because many people don't. So uh, I, I think uh, having abbreviated versions, that, that is sufficient. I don't have any quarrel with your strategy. Great. Um, do you want to talk for a moment about review? Um, sure, yeah. So. Um, you know, reviews are good for your SEO. And so if you have, if you're on, on Yelp and you have one review, um, Google isn't going to consider that as authoritative as if you're on Yelp with 50 reviews or 200 reviews. So um, it is it is worth some effort to, um, to try and, and cultivate a review life. Um, it's also probably worthwhile to focus on just a few. Don't try and have two reviews on 50 sites, but 100 reviews on three sites would be a better strategy. Um, so, and I'm going to go ahead and share my screen again. I think I can hear. Um, yeah, and so, so something I've, I've partnered with a review, um, a review management uh, product software. So, uh, what we do with that software is um, it will track reviews for you, and. Um, it, will, it has a lot of functions just to help improve your reviews. So the product is called Review Pro. And I'm an uh, you know, authorized partner. And so basically the deal with, with a 
product like this, or really it's kind of a service, I guess is more accurate because it's interfaced through me. So, um, you know, we, we've all been, you know, had this experience of we search for something, this is landscaping in Texas, and like here's someone with no reviews and no stars, and then here's someone with, you know, good stars and 26 reviews, and here's someone with good stars and 16 reviews. Pretty easy to go number, you know, call this one number one, and pretty typically people will call this one the one I'm not going to bother calling. How, how, how can they have, have no reviews? Have they just started their business? So, um, so the goal is to try and resolve that problem and help people show up really well in their reviews. And so, um, and so helping people manage their reviews, uh, a, um, you know, issuing them a report that shows what their status is. So I just ran a report on a retirement home and discovered that, you know, in some cases they didn't have any reviews since like 2018 or 2016. Um, you know, what is the frequency of the reviews? Are they recent? Um, and also responding to negative reviews is super, super important. It's also beneficial to respond to positive reviews. Um, and that kind of comes into that question of when there's more activity, when there's more traffic, Google likes it. So, um, so responding to positive is both a chance to shine and, um, and, and share, you know, share kind of your personality, um, but it's also a chance to, to kind of boost a little bit of SEO. Um, and so this software also deals with about a hundred of these secondary sites that are not the big ones, but they're maybe more industry specific like Angie's List and agingcare.com and carsrealtor.com and so on. So basically we, we start off by um, compiling a report for clients. And then when clients are signed up, they have tools that help them get reviews more easily. Things like a signature in their email that makes it with one easy with a click to get funneled into the review process. Um, the ability to write those reviews on the phone and reminders. So part of that is a, a trickle email campaign. So if I am a business and I'm trying to buy a review presence on, on the sites, then I can uh, feed these out a few a week to my existing client list and say, hey, you know, we've worked together and I could really use a review. And then they can, with one click here, get into, um, into a page that makes it pretty easy to, to go ahead and write a review. They'll see something like this. Uh, maybe you've seen that after you've gotten back from places like the auto body shop or something where they say, hey, please write us a review. Um, and so this is possible. We can put whatever buttons in here. And the idea is that the, the um, that your customer will be able to say, okay, sure, I'll write a Google review. They click on Google and then they get easily funneled into a pretty frictionless way to write a review for you. Um, to the, um, the program is that if the first question is, did we do good? Did we do bad? If the answer is good, then you do go to this. If the answer is no, I didn't like my experience, instead of going straight to a publicly posted review site, it um, offers them a chance to send you an email directly and tell you what your, the problem is. So that's, that's huge if you're able to capture a bad email, I mean, a bad review before it gets public. So that's pretty cool. Um, and then here's some of the, some of the supported sites. Um, you know, in the car industry, and in the restaurant industry, in the dentistry industry, et cetera. Um, also, the software allows us to, um, to automatically post your five-star reviews on your own website um, and onto Facebook. So just through, just through code with no effort on your part, suddenly those great reviews will get posted, and that's uh, pretty nice. Um, and that's, that's, uh, that's a brief list of what we for you in the in the review management world, and again, I don't think this is for everyone. It's for people with a certain, um, you know, a certain cash flow, a certain traffic flow. Um, a realtor who has twenty clients a year might not be necessary for them. They they probably have the bandwidth to to speak to their um, to speak to their family. Whereas, uh, you know, a roofing contractor, each job is worth. $12,000 and if they can get five more jobs a year, they're probably pretty stoked. So it, again, it really depends on, um, you know, on what your industry is and where you're at, whether that would be a, a useful thing for you. And I'm just peeking at the questions now. Is there anything, anything I need to know? Um, the last, second to last post is from Kim um, asking for ideas in terms of how to get uh -huh. uh, their tenants to uh -huh post reviews yeah um yeah you know i think contact again and um 
you know, trying to figure out what is what is the friction, what's the obstacle. Um, for example, if someone has doesn't have a Google account, there's more friction for them to actually write a, a Google review. If they're already on Yelp, then there's not so much friction. Um, you know, it, it, one thing that's great to do is to actually send people an email or something that has links, making it, you know, the less friction there is, the easier it is for them to go ahead and write the review, the better off you are. So, um, so for example, Kim might be able to send them an email saying, you know, click here, this goes directly to, to my Yelp. Click here, this goes directly to my whatever else. Um, right. And that might ease it. All right. Well, thank you so much, Annalise. That was all super interesting and relevant. And I posted your uh, website to the chat area. And we'll also be responding back to everybody who participated today and anybody else who registered um, with a replay of our talk today. And I fully intend to do this again um, probably next Friday, um, perhaps on a couple of different topics. If people are interested in being guest presenters, feel free to reach out to me or Annalisa. And um, thank you all so much for uh, participating today and good luck with your SEO and with other things that you're up to. And um, I'll stop recording and we can take a couple more questions, but I just wanted to make this a somewhat short um, offering for the replay. So thanks everybody. Thank you.